Good morning. Good to have you all with us this morning here in God's house as we prepare to receive from our Lord his gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation. As you can probably see, I'm not going to be the pastor who will be preaching this morning. Uh, we are very pleased to have President Scott Seiler here, uh, South Dakota District President. He will be here to preach uh, this morning, so we look forward to hearing God's word from him. Um, besides that, make sure you read through your bulletins. There's some announcements in there. Uh, the only one I'm going to make special note on is if you ordered Christmas greens, they are in, and you can talk to Becky. Hi, Becky. Uh, if you want to pick those up, she'll also be contacting people to let them know they are in. Um, anything else in terms of announcements this morning? All right, well, once again, good to have you all here. Uh, we'll begin with the ringing of the bells and then our opening hymn. everyone would please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins to God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord 
who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with this morning's intro. In keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. O Lord, make me know my end and what is the measure of my days. Let me know how fleeting I am. Behold, you have made my days a few hand breaths, and my lifetime is as nothing before you. And now, O Lord, for what do I wait? My hope is in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the scorn of the fool. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Hold not your peace at my tears. For I am a sojourner with you, a guest like all my fathers. In keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. <laughs>
with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Eternal God, merciful Father, you have appointed your Son as judge of the living and the dead. Enable us to wait for the day of his return with our eyes fixed on the kingdom prepared for your own from the foundation of the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with this morning's scripture readings. We begin with our Old Testament reading, taken from the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 34. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself, will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep. And I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountain of Israel, by the ravines and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture. Now the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, I myself, will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you push with side and shoulder and thrust at all the weak with your horns till you have scattered them abroad. I will rescue my flock. They shall no longer be a prey. And I will judge between sheep and sheep. And I will set over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord. I have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with our gradual. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, and whose heart are the highways to Zion. We continue with the selection from a, the bell choir, followed by a stewardship reading.
To the glory of God and for the benefits of our fellow man are the words and themes that we have seen and heard repeatedly these past 18 months. As for those who have put on Christ, we show Christ by our words and deeds. In him we do good works, using the blessings given to glorify and benefit to others. God's word brings us to the realization that no part of our life and how we live, it can remain untouched when Christ resides in our hearts. We know that it is in Christ that we do all things glorifying God. We provide with, for our families. We both physically and monetarily support the ministry of the St. Paul's Luther Church and aid in the fellow believers. In our business dealings, we show great integrity and are truly honest in our dealings with others, gladly repaying the debts we owe. We, we promote the glory of God in all that we do so others will benefit and be brought to Him. It is also to the glory of God and for the benefit of others, others that we serve and assist the governing authority that which God has placed over us. Jesus says, give to Caesar what, Caesar's, what is Caesar's and God what is God's. Having been brought into the kingdom of heaven and with Christ's love flowing from our hearts, we cannot just say, I do not kill. Rather, we seek to help and benefit, befriend others in every bodily need. And we cannot just say, I do not steal. Rather, we seek other, help others to improve and protect their property and businesses. Part of this is done by our serving and assisting the governing authority when it does not infringe upon the kingdom of God. God has granted the governments in this world power over body and property. Governments has been established to instruct, constraint, and punish, punish those who would harm those around us. That's why in Romans 13, 4, boldly proclaims, for he is God's servant to do you good. But if you do, do wrong, be afraid, for he is not bear the sword for nothing. He is God's servant and the agent of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoers. And so we bring into the service of the governing authority the same Christian generosity that we show in our families and those close to us and in our church. For, for Christ's sake, for Christ's sake, we assist the governing authority with the same Christian integrity and honesty we show in our business dealings. In Christ, we do these good works, serving and assisting in our government in the glory of God and the benefit of others. By the guidance of the Holy Spirit, working through, through the Word, our entire lives are turned over to Christ and His service. We become servants of Christ's sake to, every, to everyone using the blessings God has given, including our time and our abilities and our wealth to glorify God and to assist and to minister to those around us. As for as St. Paul wrote in the church of Ephesus, for, he is, for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. We continue with this morning's epistle lesson from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, beginning with verse 20. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has also come the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he is expected, he is accepted who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him who put all things in subjection under him, 
that God may be all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me, naked, and you did not clothe me, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We continue by confessing our Christian faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, it's from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with our sermon hymn.
Sisters and brothers in Christ here at St. Paul's, what a delight to be with you today as your district president. Uh, Sarah and I traveled up yesterday from Sioux Falls to be with you today, and it's so good to be with you uh, because indeed you are precious to our Lord and you are precious uh, really to, to me and to uh, our whole church district as together you along with the other 104 congregations in our Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod here in South Dakota, uh, like to work together. We like to be in partnership to do some wonderful things for the Lord together, such as supporting our Indian ministries on the Pine Ridge through Reverend Sutton and on the Rosebud through uh, Reverend Utecht and, and a whole lot more because we, we do this together. But thank you for your part in this mission of Christ together. And thank you, Pastor Bobby, for serving here and for allowing me to be here today instead of you being here today. Well, our text is the epistle today from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. As we consider last things, right? And we tend to do that this time of the church year. What's going to happen at the very end when there is no uh, earth as we uh, used to know it? When we meet the Lord. And that's what this is about, isn't it? Well, listen again to verses 22 and 23 of our lesson today from 1 Corinthians 15. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to him. Like you, I have some pet peeves. Well, I, I think you have some. I do, maybe more than I should have. But one of the pet peeves that I have is that you go into some stores in October, before Halloween, and already they're moving in the Christmas trees and the Christmas decorations and the wrapping paper and they're stocking up more of the toy, sh toy shelves and so forth. And this is before they've moved out the Halloween candy. Have you noticed that? At least back when we used to go to stores, right? That kind of bugs me, you know, rushing Christmas. Kind of bugs me when people leave shopping carts out in the parking lots, too. But I won't get into all of my pet peeves right now. But I'm no better when it comes to, now I'm getting back to the Halloween and Christmas thing. Because my theme today for this sermon is where Christmas and Easter are headed. That's the sermon title. That's the theme. Where Christmas and Easter are headed. I mean, we haven't even celebrated Thanksgiving yet, and already we're taking and talking about Christmas and even Easter. Yet, here we are on this last Sunday of the church year. We sometimes call this Christ the King Sunday. And I say that as I look at the scripture readings today, they focus our attention on where Christmas and Easter are headed. In the gospel, we have this description of the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, the judge, who is separating the sheep from the goats, the believers from the unbelievers, uh, in judgment. Then we have our Old Testament reading from Ezekiel, identifying the Lord as that shepherd who cares for the flock. Then there's this reading from 1 Corinthians today, chapter 15, our sermon text. This chapter is sometimes called the Great Resurrection chapter of the Bible because it establishes the fact on the basis of eyewitness testimony, and this being St. Paul, who met the Lord, the risen Lord, on the basis of his eyewitness testimony, and he says there were hundreds of people who witnessed the resurrected Lord. He says it's true, he is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. But then, here in chapter 15, having established the fact of Christ's bodily resurrection from the dead, Paul goes on to establish the certainty of your bodily resurrection from the dead someday with a new and glorious body, never to get sick again, never to die again. And when will this happen, when Christ does this for you? Well, it's at his kingly coming on the last day. That's where Christmas and Easter are headed. Jesus was made flesh in the womb of his mother Mary. 
He was born at Bethlehem at Christmas in order to go to the cross, pay for our sins, die, be buried, but then to rise again on Easter Sunday to prove that he had conquered death and sin and the devil. We couldn't have had Easter without Christmas, and we wouldn't have our own resurrection of the body someday without Christmas and Good Friday and Jesus' resurrection that first Easter. And so the resurrection of the dead on the last day when Christ returns someday is where it's all headed. And how is that stated in our lesson for today from 1 Corinthians? Well, this section of God's word assures you and me that the resurrected King Jesus is the first fruits. St. Paul wrote in verse 20, but in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. A euphemism, isn't it, for death, just fallen asleep. First fruits, that's what Jesus is. Now, in the Old Testament, Israel offered the first gathering of their crops as a kind of thank offering to the Lord, a kind of sacrifice to him. And they knew, of course, that the, the entire harvest was yet to come. There was way more to come. The first fruits were just the first of many fruits. Now, many of you experienced that, I think, with your tomatoes this summer, didn't you? Maybe your green peppers, those first cherry tomatoes that you were able to pick, well, there were more to come. I hope that's what you experienced at least this summer. That's just the way it is, isn't it? In a kind of similar way, Jesus' bodily resurrection, the first fruits, will inevitably lead to much more. The resurrection of all flesh, the rest of the harvest. Listen, for as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming, those who belong to him. At his coming. That's a reference to the last day, the judgment day, the focus of this last Sunday of the church here. And you heard it in the gospel. All the people who have ever lived are going to be gathered there before Christ the King and the Judge. Bodies raised, reunited with their souls, the resurrection of all flesh. And what a day it's going to be for you and for me who belong to Christ, as St. Paul says. And that's a pretty amazing thing, that we belong to Jesus it's amazing because you know the sinner that you are. And you know that sinners sin. And because of that sin, you will experience that physical death. Because, as it says in our reading today, in Adam all die. And we know that Adam and Eve's sin led to Cain and Abel's sin, uh, tagging along all the way to our ancestors. If yours are like mine, they were crossing the, the seas from northern Europe or from wherever yours came from. That sin stuck with your grandparents and your parents and now you. We will die because we are sinners and have sinned against God in thought, word and deed, by what we've done and by what we've left undone, right? But Christmas happened. Easter, Good Friday and then Easter happened. True resurrection with a real body happened to Jesus. And his resurrection from the dead proves that Jesus is who the Father said he was going to be, the Messiah, the great I Am. And his resurrection from the dead proves that his sacrifice was sufficient to pay for sin. But today we learn there's even more. Jesus' resurrection assures us of our resurrection, of our bodies when he returns in glory. But please understand this, sisters and brothers in Christ. In bringing this truth, this good news of your resurrection, I don't mean to gloss over death. Because death is still an enemy. It's the last great enemy, according to St. Paul. We die because we're sinners. 
And every time you read an obituary, every time you attend a funeral, well, there's one thing you know for certain about that person. That person was a sinner. That's why he or she died. You are going to have an obituary someday, too, and so will I, because you and I are sinners. But Jesus died, too, not because he was a sinner, but because he came in our place to take our place, to receive the punishment from God that we deserve and to so to save us. That means he, he also had to die. He died in our place. But his work didn't stop there. If Jesus came to be our substitute and to save us from all of the effects of sin, then that also means he had to rise in a bodily resurrection. Victory over sin and all of its effects must also mean victory over death. The undoing of death. And through Christ, God planned to undo sin and all of its effects, even the mortality and death of our bodies. Easter says it's true, and it's going to happen for you. No wonder we confess so often in the Apostles' Creed, I believe in the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. I have a question for you then. What does all of this good news mean for you now? Until Christ comes again someday in glory. How is this good news of Easter and all of its effects, including your bodily resurrection? Well, what does it mean? Especially maybe in this mixed up year that we've had. Well, how about this? Never forget that God made your body and he's going to raise it up again new and glorious. No more cancer. No more COVID. No more death. And so why not in the meantime, before Christ returns, in view of God's mercies in our lives, honor God with the choices that we make, even with our bodies. For example, St. Paul writes a little earlier in 1 Corinthians, an example of how we should live in these bodies. He says the body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Oh, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the grace that has saved you is grace that also changes you even in what you and i do with these bodies that god has given to take to take care of well, what else what else does this good news mean this good news that because of jesus resurrection well we're going to be raised too and this is all going to happen in that last day when jesus returns what else does effects does this have in our lives right now well, once again, the grace that saves you is grace that changes you. The Holy Spirit, you see, gives us a, a thankful spirit and new eyes, new eyes to see the world around us in a new way. For example, instead of those people, whoever those people are that maybe you don't like so well, instead of those people, we might be able to see instead neighbors who need to be loved. And so with these hands that God has given us, we serve them. Instead of seeking ways to get even with others, we cherish the call to, to love our neighbors as ourselves. Instead of maybe holding a grudge, we forgive 70 times 7, using the tongue that our God has given us to speak forgiveness. Instead of gossiping with our friends, tearing people down, we look for, for opportunities to build them up with this tongue God has given us. In short, the gospel frees us to live joyfully in Christ for one another. And God counts it as having done it to him, as we heard in our gospel. Finally, what else does this good news mean for you and me? Jesus is coming. Jesus is going to raise us from the dead and give us new and glorious bodies. Well, it means that we have hope, doesn't it? 
We have a certain hope of a resurrection from the dead someday. And so we have a hope and a future. And so we can speak with joy words that we just got done speaking in the Nicene Creed a moment ago. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for, I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. God promises because Christ lives, so will you. That's where Christmas and Easter are headed. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue with this morning's offertory hymn. <laughs> stand we'll continue with the prayer of the church let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs we pray God our Father in heaven look with mercy on us your needy children on earth and grant us your grace that your holy name may be hallowed by us in all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word and the fervent love shown forth in our lives Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your Son, by faith, that the number of Christians may be increased. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen us by your spirit according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of both good and evil things, that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Into your merciful hands we commend all who have requested our prayers, especially Brandy, Roger, and Pastor Dell, Michael, Joyce, and Dolores, Joyce, Ada, and Brenda, Miles, Leona, and Stephen, Barbara, Howard, and Dan, Jason, Pastor Anderson, and Gladys, Ralph, Chad, John, Vivian, and Muriel. We pray for those and all we name in our hearts and minds, and we pray for them at all times. Thy will be done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us our daily bread. Preserve us from greed and selfish cares, and help us to trust in you to provide for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins, as we also forgive those who sin against us, so that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, and that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your Spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world and its ways, and to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And lastly, O Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We trust, O Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue now with the service of the sacrament, beginning with the preface. 
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly right so to do. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave by his glorious resurrection and opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen our lord jesus christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Now this, the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Please stand for the Nunc Dimittis. unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. Receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 Please be seated for our final hymn. 